So I have something really exciting for you guys. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create a mobile nav menu dropdown on Elementor Pro. And it's gonna be completely custom and you can do quite a bit of things with it and it's gonna open up many doors. So as you can tell, whenever I shrink this to tablet, we're gonna have our hamburger menu here that we can click on. And you see that we have this nice dropdown animation and we also have a button right in here. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that before, but we can completely customize this here. And this is just a column that I created. And this works great on tablet and also on mobile. So as you can see, it's all working really good. And you can create this easily on Elementor Pro. And that's what we're going to be doing. You can tell it works perfectly. It's sticky and everything. Um, and you guys are really going to enjoy this video. It did take me some time to get this going. So please like the video for the YouTube algorithm. It'll definitely help out the channel out a lot. And if you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of my videos just like this one. So I hope you guys really enjoy. Now there's something I wanna mention here before we start. If you have any sub menus, I don't recommend that you try this option because you're gonna have some issues. Let's go ahead and begin. Go into your header builder with Elementor Pro. Now we're gonna need to start from scratch. And the reason is that we need to build our header a certain way for everything to work properly. And you'll see as we go along. Go ahead and add a section. Make sure your section has two columns. And then our first column is gonna be a width of 10%. And then our second column is gonna be a width of 90%. Now, go ahead and drag your site logo, or you can drag an image and just add your logo. Go into advance, make sure that your width is set to inline, and set this to the center. Now, go back into your elements, Go ahead and drag and drop your nav menu. I'm gonna remove the underline pointer and my breakpoint. I'm not gonna have a breakpoint, so I'm gonna set it to none. I'm gonna add some quick styling. Go to style if you need to. And then I'm gonna do about 500 for my weight. And then I'm gonna go into advance and set your width to inline and go back into your elements. Go ahead and drag your button into our second column. And I'm gonna change the text to book a call. I'm gonna go into style. I'm gonna go into typography. I'm gonna set my weight to 400. My transform should be set to uppercase. And my font size is gonna be 13. My padding on my button. Now this is just my preference, but of course you can go ahead and adjust it however you would like. I'm gonna do my border radius zero. I'm not gonna have a border radius. And on my padding, I'm gonna do 18 from the top. From the right, I'm gonna do 30. Bottom, I'm gonna do 18. And then on the left, I'm gonna do 30. There we go. Then I'm gonna to go to advance. And I'm going to set my button width to inline. There we go. Click on your second column. Your vertical alignment should be set to the middle. Our horizontal alignment will be set to the end. There we go. Now we have our header set up for desktop. As you can tell, it's going to look great. Okay. So let's do one more thing here with our elements. Go into your elements and let's go ahead and add an icon. So search for your icon. Go ahead and drag that in here. Now go ahead and change your icon. This part won't really matter. You don't really have to do this, but I like to just set my icon by default anyway. So I'm gonna upload an SVG. I already have mine uploaded. I'll provide this in the description so you guys can download it and then use it on your website. And if you need to change the color of these icons, just go into Figma or any graphic editor and then just change the color of the SVG. So I'm gonna choose this one here for my bar icon, and there we go. Now don't worry about the styling of this yet. We'll adjust that later on. Now we just need to add some classes to our elements. So the first one we're gonna do is our nav icon. Since we're already on it, go into advance and then go ahead and type in nav dash icon. Now go into your nav menu and in your class, type in nav dash menu and then click on your button, go into advance and on your class, type in nav dash btn. Now click on your second column, which is the one holding your nav menu and your button and then go to advance and then in your CSS ID, we're gonna go ahead and add a nav-container, just like so. Now we just need to add our CSS, go into your settings, and then go into advance, and then you can drop your CSS in here. Now you can also drop this CSS in the customizer as well, or if you have code snippets, you can also drop it in there. Paste your CSS, and there you have it. Now as you can tell, it's gonna go ahead and disappear our nav icon, and that's exactly what we want it to do. Now I'll go over the CSS code towards the end of the video once we've already accomplished everything. Now before we go ahead and add our jQuery, let's go ahead and make sure this is responsive. So let's go into tablet and we have an issue here where this column isn't set to the full width. So make sure you click on this column and set this to the 
bull width of 100%. Now you will notice these issues here, we'll fix them right now. Now something to note is that our second column is not visible. Now that's exactly what we want. Because whenever we click our nav icon, we want this second column to show. And that's the reason we have it on display none for now. So let's go ahead and adjust our logo here. So click on your logo and then set this to the width that it's a custom. And we're gonna adjust this a bit here. Maybe make it about this size. This is just more of a preference. So probably do about 80 pixels and then go ahead and click on your um, nav icon and set this to inline. There we go. And then something to note here is that it's not in the center. So it's, it's a little bit bugged out. So make sure that you have your icon selected, go back to desktop and then go ahead and set it to inline and then set it to the center. Sometimes we have some bugs with an Elementor. Just make sure you do that just in case. And then we can go ahead and do the same thing. Okay, we already did that for the site logo, that's fine. Okay, so that's all set now. Now click on your first column and on your horizontal alignment, make sure that it's set to space between. And while we're here, let's set our vertical alignment to the middle. And if we're having that issue um, with our icon, but we have the space here, we can just click on this and don't worry about this little bug, it doesn't really matter. It's just doing that because of our CSS, but it's not gonna do anything on the front end. So we should be fine. So just click on your second icon and then we're going to add some padding to this or I should say some margin and we're going to do a negative from the bottom just so then we can get this about to the middle. There we go. So that should be set now. And if you do need to adjust your icon, you go into style and you can adjust the width of this, I believe. Oh wait, I think we're doing this through our icon. So just leave it at this for now. That should be fine. Let's leave it at that. Now let's go ahead and just check how mobile looks like. So click on your mobile version and then this is all looking great. Make sure that your column is set to 100. That's very important. So that's looking good. Now, something I do want to mention is that you don't need to use this custom icon. I only added it as a bonus, but of course you can just use any icon and you can upload it and then adjust the CSS so then it changes to the closing icon whenever you open it. And I'll be going over that in a bit. So now that we have everything set and everything's responsive, let's go ahead and click update. Now, before we even view this, we still need to add our jQuery. So let's go ahead. Actually, you know what? One thing I do need to do is let's go back into tablet. Let's go into our custom CSS, go into advance, and let's go ahead and comment this out for now so then we can see how our drop down is going to look like. And as you can see, we don't really have it looking like how we need to. So one thing to do is click on your second column, make sure that it's set to 100%, and then click on your button, go to content, and let's set that to full width here, justify. And then now let's click on our nav menu, and let's go into style and we can adjust this how we would want. Maybe we don't want that much spacing on the side. Our vertical, we can go ahead and adjust our vertical padding here. This looks pretty good to me. Let's just make sure that it looks good on mobile. And there we go. Okay. Now, before we go back and, and adjust our jQuery, let's go back into our um, CSS and let's uncomment that out again. And there we go. Let's click update. Now let's go into our dashboard, but I'm just going to open another tab here. Now let's go into Elementor, custom code. Now if you do have custom code snippets, you can use that as well. Then click add new, and then go ahead and just name this. We're gonna call this mobile nav menu, and your location should be set to the body end. Always load jQuery. Now let's go ahead and paste our jQuery in here. There we go. I'll go over this some more towards the end of the video, and then go ahead and click publish. Entire site, it's very important. And then click on save and close. There we go. Now let's go ahead and view our preview and let's see if everything is working properly. Let's go back to our home page so that we can see how everything looks. And in case you guys want to learn how to build this website here, I have a tutorial on my channel and I'll link it down in the description. So let's go ahead and view how responsive this is. Something I do like to do is just remove um, the top bar here. I don't need that right now. So let's go into inspect and it went straight to mobile, but we're going to start off on desktop and then we're gonna move down here. As you we can see, we have everything working properly and it works very smooth. Now let's go into mobile. And as you can tell, all works great. Now we don't have the set to sticky yet, but we can set this to sticky so it works properly as well. So we can go back here, go into our main section. It doesn't matter for our mobile or desktop. And then just go into, click on your section, go to motion effects, let's go top and we'll have it working on desktop, tablet, and mobile, and then we'll click update, and we'll go back here, and let's test this out. 
Oh, so we have that issue because we didn't give our section a background. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Make sure that's set to white. And so we can see it works properly. We have no issues there. Now we have this extra space only because of our uh, mobile menu here, but don't worry about that. That shouldn't happen if we were viewing this without being logged in. So we should be fine there and we should be fine there. There we go. And it's just doing this because of our menu, by the way, like I said, it kind of messes the spacing up a little bit. So don't worry about that. Everything should be fine there. Let me just refresh this here. So there we go. Something I'm going to do is actually view this in incognito so you guys can see how it all works properly. There we go. You can see everything is working good. We go here, we open it, we go over here, it still closes properly, and everything is working great. And that's it. Okay. So I do want to go over some of the CSS and also go over the jQuery as well. So let's go over the CSS first. Something I did want to mention is that if you guys, let me go back, let me go to the CSS actually and uncomment this out here. Now this is gonna open up a lot of doors because you're gonna actually able to add more stuff to this dropdown if you even wanted to. It's just another column. You can add other elements to it if you need to. Maybe like a, maybe a number of people can call or whatever you would like. You can just drag an, another element in here and then add more sections to this dropdown. That's something that you wanted to do. And then just make sure that you don't have it display on desktop and only on mobile. So. Let's go to the CSS and let's go over that now. So basically right here, we just have a tablet breakpoint because we only want the CSS to activate on tablet and mobile. So basically anything under 1024, this style here is gonna activate. So currently right now, let me uncomment that out. So currently we have our nav container, which is our entire second nav here, right? I uh, accidentally clicked that, our second nav here. And we're setting that to display num and an overflow of hidden. And then the next one, is just making our nav menu vertical. So if I were to see if I can uncomment this out again and show you what that does for those of you wondering. So if I actually remove this, you notice how we're gonna have this issue where our column here is gonna be horizontal and we want it to be um, vertical. We want our nav menu to be vertical. So that's basically what that does. And we only have that set to anything below 1024. And then our nav menu here is setting everything, setting our nav menu and our nav button, this one as well, to 100%. If you see if I remove this, eh, yeah, we'll have this weird issue here. That's not what we want. So that's why we have it set like that. And then we have our nav icon, which is right here. And we have it only, we have a, a display none with anything above 1025. So basically, we're not gonna have our nav icon show on um, desktop. And that's pretty much what this is doing here. And then in here, Something that we are missing actually, and I totally forgot guys to even go over, is that our icon isn't changing. So that's something that we need to do. We need to go ahead and add um, our icon URL. So then whenever we click on this, uh, the nav icons change. So let me go in here and uncomment this out. Click update. As you can tell, whenever I go into, I didn't even notice that, but I can show you here, right? So I click on this and you notice that it's not changing to the X icon closing icon there. So we just need to go ahead and it's very simple. I'm gonna open up another tab because I'm gonna go over the jQuery here in a bit. I don't wanna make this video too long. Um, so I'm trying to go over it as quick as possible. Now let's copy this. Now this is gonna be our open bar icon. So we're gonna paste this one in here. Let's paste it in there. There we go. And make sure that you paste it in between your single quotes. And now let's grab our closing icon and let's copy the link. And then let's paste it right in here inside our single quotes. Now let's click update. Now let me go back into my incognito, keep refresh this, and as you can tell, oops, it's not working. Okay guys, so I guess the reason why it wasn't working is it's because we already had our icon set to an SVG, so for some reason it was bugging out. So what we actually need to do is make sure you remove your icon here, and then just add the bar icon for now. Add this one in here, just use this, make sure it's selected, and then click update. I don't know why it was doing that, but it just wasn't working for some reason, so just do that, and then now it should be working properly. Even if we go over here and let's refresh this. There we go. So you can tell it's working great. So now let me go over the jQuery here. So basically this function right here is gonna toggle our mobile menu whenever someone clicks on the nav icon, and it's also gonna change the nav icon as well on click. So we have a function, jQuery function, and then we have a jQuery function of an event listener on click that has a function, 
and then basically we're just toggling the container. Currently we had it at display none and we toggle it to slide toggle and we have a duration of 200 but you can change this duration so it's a little bit maybe faster. I mean 200 is already pretty fast but if you wanted it slower actually you can do 500 instead and this is the duration of whenever someone clicks on the nav icon and the menu slides down. So that's that duration. So you can also do slow um, and fast if you needed to, but I like to just set it at 200 is fine. And then we have our jQuery function, which is just gonna toggle our class and change our icon to a closing icon. It's basically what that does, toggle class. And then this one here is pretty interesting. And the reason I set this is because if you don't have this, it's gonna be a little bit buggy whenever someone is adjusting your uh, nav menu on desktop. Let's say someone's moving it like this, and you're gonna see a bunch of bugs if you don't have this. And that's basically what it's doing. It's pretty much just adjusting it on the window resize. We're getting the window width here. We have an if statement with the width. And we're seeing if the width is greater than 1024, then we want to make sure that our nav container is showing. And we don't want to set to display none because if we have it set to display none, our this part right here would disappear, the, the this, this entire second column. So we wouldn't see our nav menu and our button in case someone is um, you know, moving this around, right? So that's why we gotta make sure that we have this in here as well. You, you can see it's set to show otherwise, if it's, and um, we have it as otherwise, so basically, uh, and then therefore if the width is not greater than 1024, then we know that we're still on mobile and tablet. So then we have this activate else, and we have it just hide, so then someone can, someone has to click on it to be able to show um, our drop down menu that we created. And that's basically how that works. It's a very simple jQuery. Um, and I, I was gonna do just um, some vanilla JavaScript to this, but I wanted to make my code very clean and very simple. Um, and that's why I just kind of broke it down into something like this. And this worked perfectly. And it's it's not much, but it's gonna get the job done. So that's pretty much it for this video. It probably did take a while. And hopefully you guys are still here. Honestly, it took a lot of work to actually get this going. Hopefully you guys ended up enjoying it. And if you can like the video for the YouTube algorithm, that'd be great. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any of my videos, including videos like this one. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.